am I going to spend the rest of my life with somebody who can't show love? So we actually have a very powerful show. Strap on your seatbelts because this is really, this is very deep. Okay, so get ready for deep. Type in below if you're ready for deep. Okay, here's, here's a situation. This is called Blocks to Feeling Loved. Okay, we all have them, and we're going to learn how to get on the other side of them. So I'm going to start with a story, and this is a student who came to me a few weeks ago and with the following thing. She said, Leia, I have a really big problem in my marriage, and I really don't know how to deal with it or who, who to turn to about this, and I've worked with people with it, but it's, it's, it's just very, very hard for me. And that is that my husband is unable to show love. He can't show love. And he, I mean, maybe he tries and I've talked to him a lot about it and tried to work with him on being a, you know, to showing me more love, but he just can't. He's just kind of like incapable. And I'm like sitting here thinking, am I going to spend the rest of my life with somebody who can't show love? Like, you, you you have no idea how lonely it is. And I feel like I'm living my life myself. I feel like I'm going through life and he's there and I'm here, but it's never a connection. And we have kids and I love the kids and he loves the kids. And, but he has an inability to show love. Do I have to live with that the rest of my life? So I asked her, I said, well, what was your relationship with your father? And she said, you know, I'm just kind of going back to her history. I'm not a psychologist, psychiatrist, any of medical, whatever. I don't have any initials after my name. Okay, so I'm just doing the standing on one foot. But thank God, I've been for a couple of decades doing, you know, whatever. So I've heard a lot of stories. So I asked her, what is your relationship with your father? And she said, it's fine. It's perfectly good. I said, do you feel close to him? And she said, yeah, yeah. And did you feel close to him? Yeah. So did you, were you able to trust him when you were a child? And now she started hesitating. Well, not really. Was he there for you when you really needed him? Well, not really. Was he, would you consider him like on the category, like he was a great dad or he was just a their dad or he was a bad dad? And she said, well, you know, he was, he, you know, I think he tried. He tried. Said, okay. What was your relationship with your mother? And she said, fine, fine. I said, was she trustworthy? Was she there for you? Was she like a good mother? Was she, you know, and she said, look, my mother had mental health issues. That's another thing. But, you know, whatever, that's how it is. So I asked her, and I don't know how I had the intuition to ask her this, but I said, how old were you when your father left? She looked at me like, how did you know my father left? <laughs> I said, how old were you? And she said, I was 11. So I said, when your father left, did he like move up the block and you like spent half the time with your mother and half the time with your father? It was a divorce. Uh, half the time. And she said, well, not really. He moved far away. And, you know, I saw him about once a year. But we still had a great relationship. We still were close. We still were, you know. And I'm like, okay, okay. Did he send you a gift on your birthday? Well, that's another thing. And I'm not going to get in there about whether her father should or shouldn't or whatever. And But it, it she was saying it as if that she had this great relationship with her father, which really to, did not look necessarily like a great relationship with her father. So I asked her the following question. How certain are you that your husband is not capable of showing love versus you aren't capable of feeling that got the tears. So this is a question we need to ask ourselves in terms of blocks to feeling loved. Is what is the emotional... Did I tell you this was heavy, right? Oh it's heavy? My oh my gosh. <laughs> right. This is heavy. That's my Sarit over there. And I just... Yeah. So heavy. But the issue is, what are we doing in our life to block love? And we all do it. And the most important way to shift that and to change that is to see it and to understand it and, frankly, to feel sad about it because that's going to motivate us to grow in the way 
that we need to grow in order to feel more loved. Could it be that you have a husband who doesn't, you know, show love and that whatever, and it's all outside of you and all the circumstances, you know, it's a perfect storm and you don't feel loved? Yes, that is entirely possible. And maybe that's 5% of the population or 2% or 20%. I don't, what do I know? Okay. And I, I didn't lately go around with a microphone on the street to ask people this, but it could be that the circumstances are such that you don't have, you, you know, people aren't showing you love. Is there something you can do about that? Probably. There's always, remember, we, as we said last week, there's always something we can do. So the question is, and this is what each one of us need to ask ourselves, what is a block, what is our own blocks to feeling loved? So we're going to do a little exercise. Okay, ready? Ready? Guys, okay. We're going to do a little exercise. And by the way, if you have questions about this or comments about this, please comment below. And for the people on the teleconference, press star six if you want to ask a question about this, whatever, because we're going deep. And if this applies to you, it's all anonymous. Nobody knows who you are. And you can get your questions answered about this because I did quite a bit of research on our sources, what our sources say about this. What is our the tradition that will solve this and help us to get the love that we so rightly deserve? Okay, that's what we're working on today. So hopefully by the end of today's class, you will feel more love in your life because you'll have just know a couple little tricks or whatever that can help you to get more love. Okay, so we're going to do this exercise. Visualize. If you're married, visualize your husband. If you're not married, visualize someone who, uh, you, who is very your closest person to you or one of the closest people to you. So <clears throat> visualize... I'm going to just use, say husband because these are. Visualize your husband walking into the br- room. You had a great day with him. You're not in a fight. You're not bearing any grudges at the moment, right? Okay, at the moment. I said at the moment, so don't worry. It's r- at the moment you're not bearing a grudge. It was just been like one of those woohoo days. And your husband turns to you and he says, I really love you. What exactly in that moment are you feeling? What are you feeling? Are you happy? Like, oh, thank you, dear. And you can, the love just goes right in. Great. Are you feeling annoyed? Like, what does he want from me now? Are you feeling undeserving? Like, yeah, yeah, he's saying that, but uh, you know, I'm really not worthy of that love. Do you think he is, uh, uh, do you feel a sense of fear? Like, oh, gosh, wow, ooh, that was like a little strong, that was a little heavy, that was a little whatever. Are you feeling that? Are you feeling that, you know, manipulated, like there's something, you know, behind his love? He couldn't possibly love you. So what we're doing right now is you're kind of taking a look and being able to introspect and see what is my own personal block to feeling loved. And once you identify that, it gives you a lot of power to get on the other side of it. What, are, how, what do we bring to the party? What is that the thing where it says that if you... Do you see switch cameras when I talk to Sarit? N- yeah. No, it, it sometimes. Sometimes? It, I, I still see you. <laughs> oh, you see me. Okay. Oh, yeah. I guess you see me from this side. Yeah. Of no, no. no they do. They see that your head is turning. <laughs> they see that my head's turning. Okay. And you're fine. talking to someone. Some I'm here. Invisible person. Okay. Right. You are. Fine. So I have no recollection of what I was saying. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Oh, yeah. No, so people are always complaining, you know, like I have my, um, every party I go to is terrible and people don't know how to entertain these days or whatever. Like the one thing that every party that they go to has in common, they are there. Okay. (laughs) Hello. So work on yourself. So this is, we are working on ourselves. This is how we're going to, how we're going to have better lives. Okay, fine. And that Vilna Gon says that's the whole purpose we're on the planet for in the first place. So we will take that as a, a general Klala, de- general rule. Okay. So now we're going to look at what the personal blocks of feeling loved are. And I, wrote, I came up with 10 of them. There's probably even more. So you can write them down. You can uh, type them in if you think of ones that I didn't, that I don't cover and we'll share them with a the group. Um, so number one, personal knee jerk reaction. So that is when you look back at when your husband walked in the room and said, I love you very much. What were you personally feeling at the moment? And this is, tells you the area that you need to grow so, or can grow if you choose to grow, if you choose to, choose to feel more loved. Your choice. Okay, number one, you were never taught how to feel loved. So like the 
lady from the beginning of the story, she, she didn't even know what that felt like to be loved. So either that's a parental thing or that's a trauma thing or an emotional thing um, or the love was very conditional on your behavior. So that's, these are your blocks to feeling love. Number two was self-esteem issues, feeling undeserving of love. Number three, life circumstances, busyness, hardships, crazy things, you know, whatever. So it's like, I just don't even have time to feel loved. As I said, we need to feel sad about this. Only by feeling sad about not letting the love in will we be able to have the motivation and the strength to move forward. Okay. Number four is, I'm not going to let you love me. I'm not going to give you the satisfaction. You did this to me last week. You did that to me. You constantly are putting me down. You didn't, you know, you didn't, you uh, uh, made fun of me or made me feel badly in front of uh, your mother, my mother-in-law, you know, whatever it is. So I'm not going to give you the satisfaction of letting that love get in. This is very common. And we're going to have, we're going to get to the solutions to these things. Unresolved anger. Again, we're going to get to solutions, but these are the reasons why people feel blocks, how they feel blocks, not wanting to feel vulnerable. Because if you feel a block of love, you're not, you, you know, it's kind of like makes you needy of that love. That's a hard place to be, especially if you're mad at somebody or especially if you're a particularly controlling person or a particularly perfectionist person. I don't know any people like that. Um, the, and a hello. Okay, so, but, you know, for that, it's like you don't want to feel vulnerable. You don't want, you want to feel like the queen of the world. You don't want your husband to, you know, I need him to love me, you know. So that's hard. Um, let's see. Emotional baggage, trauma. And there's a lot of this in the world, and people just bury it and bury it and stuff it and stuff it without it, rather than dealing with it. Um, we're going to get to solutions. Husband's actions can't penetrate our armor. Like he can be jumping through the roof, and you, you gave him the five love languages, and you underlined parts and whatever, and he, he read it cover to cover. He can't penetrate your armor, okay? Um, here's a biggie. This is more on the heavy, heavy stuff, and that is that you're uncomfortable with self-love, so there's no chance you're letting that love in from him. Okay, we're going to get a solutions to this. Um, and then the last one, number 10, is you can't feel God's love. So there's some people who grow up, you know, angry at God. Maybe they love God. Maybe they believe in God. Maybe they don't believe in God. Who knows? But they can't feel God's love. And that that's, again, that's a, a source of sadness. We should feel sad about that, that we can't feel his love. And then we're going to come to solutions and how to solve that. Okay, everybody with me so far? Yeah, any questions from the peanut gallery there? Not, the peanut gallery. <laughs> Not yet. No, Not yet. No. But if our, our listeners want to comment on whether any of these um, resonate with them, that would be great. That would be great. Open yeah. Or even a thumbs up so we know that we're like whatever. By the way, we hit 1,000 people last week. Did you show? Yes. I, I can yeah. share that, right? Like that's yes. not like private, whatever. So no, that's no, very yeah, exciting. And we see that. <laughs> it means a lot. To us. Like we put a uh, we put a lot into this, and we're really, really appreciative. And, and, and we, we, but we, uh, anyway, thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, means a lot to me personally and to the whole team. So, okay, so let's go into our sources because this is going to help us to understand what, you know, so I don't feel loved, so who cares? Nah, -uh. okay. The Chazanish writes in a letter, the nature of a woman is, in, is to enjoy finding favor, to be cherished in her husband's eyes, and she constantly yearns for this. Now, I know this quote. This is an actual quote, um, and the... It's hard for women to hear this for the first time. People who are uh, are new to the show, this is like, are you joking? Like, you know, so listen to some of the other shows and then you'll get like the reality of the world is that a woman wants to be cherished. Some of the you will say, yeah, yeah, I want to be cherished. Like, hello, what are you, how, who wouldn't want to be cherished? But there's some women who say, I don't want to be cherished. I'm a partner. I'm an equal. I want, you know, whatever. So this is a process, but this is what the Chazanish says. And what that means is that we, from our very soul. God created us in a particular way. We don't know why he did what he did, but he created us in a particular way. And we are, um, he created us to crave that and yearn for that um, love from our husbands. So to deny that means that you know, it's kind of like, you know, opening up the, the dishwasher manual and it says, yes, uh, you know, put the plug on the bottom before you turn the water on. You're like, huh, I'm ignoring that l l rule. And, you don't, and then the water leaks all over your kitchen, okay? 
part of God's thing is you are designed to need cherishing, and here's a guy to give it to you. And for the single people, he hopefully, God willing, he'll he'll come. Um, so that's just the chaz, the chazan ish is te- teaching us that's how we are. Now we need to work on making sure that that love gets in. Okay. More than the macabre wants to receive the love, the giver wants to give the love. So meaning more than than. We want to receive it. Our husband wants to give it. So the Maharal writes, the one who gives, gives the mashpia, desires to give over to the receiver. So the whole married life is, is the husband giving and us receiving. And if we have blocks to receiving that love, the, the, um, besides the fact that we're not feeling the love that we could, which is very, very sad, it also means that our husband, his role for being on the planet isn't fulfilled. And that will show up in ways like he's not as good in business, he doesn't feel as happy in his life, he doesn't feel fulfilled and satisfied, and he, his, his parenting skills uh, are decreased. Every way of him to be fulfilling his mission in life is decreased because we aren't able to feel his love. So this is I'm trying to give you sources for the motivation to work on this, especially for people who have self-esteem issues and undeserving issues. You need to work on this, not because you deserve it or do whatever, it's because you, to make that uh, giving and receiving in your marriage uh, more powerful, which brings in the Shekhinah, the, the godly light into your home. That's not the right translation, right? Yeah. It's Shekhinah, the, uh, the presence, of, the female presence of Hashem. Okay. As Chazal say, the rain, oh, I said the, the rain yearns, for, oh, no, I didn't. The Chazal say that the rain yearns for the ground. The rain is the giver and the earth is the receiver and the, the, the rain just wants to go into the ground. And that's how your husband wants to uh, give to you and give love to you. Um, okay, I think that, that, that I had one more, but I don't think it's as applicable as the ones we already did. Okay, let's go to the tools of the day for feeling loved. So do we have any questions? Anybody? Sarit? Anybody could type any in? Anyone? Um, any, actually, any teleconference yeah, you no, can do? No, actually, we do have one question. Um, actually, similar to, I think, um, referring back even to last week's show with Libby, um, that what happens if your husband doesn't understand your your sort of language of love, meaning he's not showing you love because he just doesn't know what it is that you need in that department. Everyone sort of, as as I'm assuming they're saying from Libby last week, where she wanted him to do stuff for her. And if he did things for her, then, then she, she felt, felt loved. loved. She mm-hmm. didn't want to hear the words and and have him tell her how much she's how amazing she is. She wanted him to actually do things. And he wasn't that type of person. So their love languages were very cross. They weren't on the same page. Excellent question. First of all, thank you very much for asking the question. Um, it's very good. So the issue is a woman wants to make how to give to her her husband's responsibility. Like, okay, I told you what my love language is. Hello, wake up. I get that. And maybe in an ideal world, that would actually happen. Maybe if your husband, you know, is independently wealthy, doesn't work, doesn't have anything to do, and but sit around and figure out how to make you happy, which he should spend time figuring out how to make you happy. But but he's harried just like you are, you know, running here, running there, and he he maybe can't multitask as well as you. Uh, I'm, I'm going to get sexist comments here, but whatever. Okay, <laughs> it's some uh, in general, whatever generalized things, you know. Um, you know, somebody look up the studies and send them to me because whatever, to, so that I sound like I know what I'm talking about. But basically, the play a men don't multitask. I'll tell you. Okay, That's thank you. Study. Okay, that, I'm giving it the seal. You, there you go. Okay, no, <laughs> seal of three. Men don't multitask. Was, there you go. Okay, but fine. <laughs> so the point is that men, you know, he's got a million things to do. You know what your needs are. Open your mouth. I mean, hopefully you can talk. Like I can hardly talk, but hopefully you can talk. You can say again and again and again. Now, is it as nice if he were to, you know, do the acts of service? What did she say? She, she wants him to do she things. Wants to do things. And if he, oh, he, she told him, oh, I just want you to do things. That'll make me feel like you're, you know, participating in the household and make me feel loved. And he go on for the rest of eternity, for the rest of his life doing that. Good luck. If you get that to happen, please send me a letter. I will write a book about it and, you know, we'll, we'll have a million dollars. You know what I'm saying? This is, so the point is, The woman gets annoyed that she's the one who has to solicit that love from her. And as we've seen from her sources from prior prior classes, 
A woman has Bini Yasera. She has the ability to understand the depths of things way more than a man does. His logic is maybe, uh, you know, better. And these are, uh, this is all sourced. This isn't Leah Richheimer's opinion and Leah Richheimer's good idea. This is all sourced. So a woman has this intuition that of what she needs and how things should go. And rather than being annoyed that she has to constantly tell him, just t telling him is, in other words, you, if you don't tell him and he does it, then that's an A++++ plus 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 giving to you. But that you're getting those once a month or once every two months, or once every six months, or once a year. Hello. If you solicit the um, uh, love, it's a B plus. Uh, maybe it's a B minus. Maybe it's a C plus. But better to get C plus every day than a plus, 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 plus once a six months. Okay, once in six months. So to answer the question is that she... If she communicates, she needs to communicate to him about that a much more deeper way. Not only that, she has to um, repeatedly do it and just be okay with that. The good thing about this, when I teach this to women, they're annoyed at first and then, mm -hmm. then when they start getting into the habit and the routine of soliciting that love and that, you know, or the need that she has, it's kind of like becomes second nature and it goes into the thing. And the husband responds much better because he's, you know, again, if, if she does it by nagging and saying, you know, you didn't do the dishes, do the dishes now. I, I, I told you, you know, that's not going to go very well. But if she said, oh, you know, I, I brought all the food in and I did this. Do you mind helping or whatever works for him? You have to do trial and error and see what works for your husband. Excellent question. Okay, let's go right into the tools of the day. This is the tools of the day for feeling loved. So <clears throat> number one is to catch yourself in your knee-jerk reaction. So from the beginning where I did the exercise where you, when your husband comes in and says, I love you very much, what are you thinking at that point? You need to catch yourself in the act. To catch yourself blocking love. Very crucial. Um, so in the middle of catching yourself, in the middle of blocking, you need to catch yourself. And here is the first tool to feel sad when you are blocking love. Your husband comes in, hey, how are you doing? And you're annoyed about something. He says, hey, how are you doing? You look great today. And you're just like, you're annoyed with him. So you're not going to let that love in. Catch yourself blocking that love. That's the first thing. And feel sad. This will motivate you. If it's helpful to, because then your next action is going to be, ooh, I'm blocking myself. Your next action may not be, okay, I'm doing great. How are you? And drop the whole thing. Good luck with that. You know what I mean? We're not, we're not robots. We're not automatons. But getting in touch with the feeling of sadness that you're blocking the love will mean that maybe the next day your husband, you hear his car pull up to the driveway or whatever, you hear the front door open and you're like, he's going to come in here and he's going to say, hey, how are you doing? Great to see you. It's a good chance of that. Maybe he won't, but good chance of that. I, that gives me, the, from the 50 steps from him to go, from him to walk in the door, unless you're greeting him at the door, in which case, good, good, gold, <laughs> gold stars. Okay. But that gives me like a minute and a half to shift my thinking from I'm blocking this love to whatever he says, I'm going to smile. You don't have to go crazy over it. I'm going to smile and say, thanks. I'm going to get myself there. Understanding your blocks will help each and every day. You'll see. Okay. If it's helpful, keep a journal of the times you block love answering the following questions. So you'd write at the top, you get these cute little pink, pink or purple, your sweet turquoise, whatever you, you pick a nice journal and you write in there, um, here are my blocks to feeling loved. What did I feel when he said that, when he tried to give me love? Uh, why, what did you do when he said it? Did you say, yeah, thanks. You know, did you say, oh yeah, I love you too. Did you ever let it in? Write it down. On a scale from one to 10, what level of sadness were you able to get to that you block his love? Was it, you know, 10, you blocked all of the love? Was it like an eight, you let a little love in? Was it one, you let most of the love in? Or zero, you let all of his love in? Is this beautiful? This could really change your life. If you took this to heart and used this as an exercise, you can actually fulfill God's wish for you, which is to feel all of the love that he has prepared 
for you from the beginning of time. Since Adam and Chava walked the earth, God knew you were going to be born, and he prepared a huge, massive chunk of love to go to you. You may not have gotten from your parents or from your kids or from your bullies or from whatever. He's prepared a lot for you. Now it's your right, it's your duty, it's your um, privilege to let that love in. So Leia, I have um, someone who wants to know, uh, what if they had abuse in their childhood and feel there's no way that they'll ever be able to be loved because they don't really know what it means to be loved, obviously. Hmm. Cry We're now. going to a commercial <laughs> break, right? Commercial break <laughs> as we take a moment to cry. No, that's very sad. Yeah. Yeah, go for counseling. Yeah. Um, I assume that, you know, somebody who's had abuse as a child was, you know, would have been suggested to or would have thought about going to counseling already. So they might have already been through a year, six months, two years, whatever, of counseling. They probably went through counseling of healing the wounds. I'm not necessarily certain that they went through counseling to say, I block love, teach me how not to block love. Okay. So counseling, if you've been to counseling for abuse, you know, and you haven't covered this, that for sure would be something to, t- to put on your to-do list to do. Um, but also this is something you can share with your husband that you, you know, I mean, there has to be a lot of trust in the relationship and a lot of good communication in the relationship for that to happen. If you don't have that, you definitely need a third party in there. But um, this is something you can, you can learn to, to heal yourself. It's much quicker with the therapist, with the right therapist. A lot of times you have to try this, that one didn't work and that one didn't work. And if I lose my voice, then what do we do? Yeah. Uh, that one didn't work and that one didn't work, you know, whatever. And you, you know, it might take a few tries. Then you get somebody and you actually can make progress very quickly, especially if you're very clear about what you want to accomplish in therapy. That's the, you know, going in there sort of like, well, whatever, I just want to feel better about life. That, you know, that might be a long haul. But if you, if you go in there and say, I want to learn how to feel more loved. Um, you know, hopefully with a, a competent therapist, that should be, you know, several sessions, two, three, five sessions or something like that. That's not a three-year process unless you're, you know, a real case of, uh, or, if, or you haven't covered, uh, uh, gone through uh, therapy for abuse before. Um, but it's a very good question, and I'm sorry for the, for the abuse. And I give you a blessing that God should help you to feel the the love that he's prepared for you. You had a kink in the wheel, you know, that is a, that's a hurdle. And that hurdle was put there for whatever reason. And, uh, you, you know, probably you've survived a lot of stuff and have a lot to be proud of in terms of your relationships going through that and still having good relationships. So you've got strength in you to also work through this. What's so sad for me though, is that just that question, then knowing that even if you're not, you were never abused and you've had a beautiful childhood where you had tons of love and you mm-hmm. cherished and you still could come into marriage and even for a few years in my marriage, you could go in loving the person and wanting to marry them and thinking this is it and this is who I want to be with for the rest of my life. And then two you know, maybe I want to say a year in, but I'll push it to two, three years mm-hmm. in. You're sort of going, who is this person? And why am I with them? And you... And I got the wrong... Yeah, and I got the wrong guy. And, and yeah. do they come like leased cars where you can trade them in and get a new <laughs> one? Like, it's, a, it's, it's very mm-hmm. sad that obviously being in your class for so long, I've learned over the years now what... What were the causes of that? But this question really brings that back into my mind, how I had points where I was feeling, we're never going to get this, and I'm never going to feel the love, and it, this isn't going to work. And so that's so scary that you could be not abused and still feel all this. Feeling of not feeling the love. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, can I ask you a question about Yes, okay. And And by the way, we yes. have rabbinic approval for Sarit to, 
uh, discuss her husband's, you know, her personal thing. Nobody else. We you know, kinda, <laughs> we kind of we kind of so make Ruben see married to Joel. No, and that's, <laughs> hello, hello, yes. hello, hello. So yeah, you know, totally we, said, she, she, yeah, we have, and he also the hu- the yes. husband had to approve and everything, yes. whatever, yes. and in out of the goodness of Sarit's heart, she's doing it yes. so that other people can gain from her growth and from her mistakes and from her whatever. So yeah, yeah. Hell But anyway, so your thing was you didn't feel loved. Because it just got to a point where, like, you just feel like the wrong person, and like everything he was doing was annoying. It was or annoying, something. yeah. I felt as though he just doesn't get me. He doesn't understand me. He's doing all the wrong things, it, and and I really believe much of it was, as you said, not allowing that cherishing. I thought, of course, I want to be cherished. I'm, I got married to be cherished. I want my husband to worship the ground I walk on and pamper mm-hmm. me and take care of me. Mm-hmm. But I didn't understand what cherishing really means. Making myself vulnerable was not something that I was willing to do. With, yeah. No, mm-hmm. I was very independent and I did not want to make myself vulnerable that way. And I think that was a huge block. Um, but yeah, it was very hard. It was very hard because I know he was trying to do everything, but, and like Libby from last week, I'm also very much into you do things for me and I feel the love, and he was mm-hmm. more into saying it or talking about it. And I'm like, I don't need to hear that. I'm right, great. right. I know I'm great. Like, Thank just you. do something just for me. Do the and, yes, <laughs> just wash the dishes, okay, and that, that makes me feel great. I you got know? it. So, it's, I got it. Yeah, it so what's nice. your question? No, meaning that it's it's not even a question. It's more that I feel such sadness about this. That even if you're not abused, even if you're coming from a healthy you can still background, feel you can still feel not so loved. not loved mm. with a person that you really did mm. feel was the one and you married loving. Meaning in all these situations, even this woman, at some point he must have loved her. She must have felt it because she married him. Right. So somewhere yeah. along the line, it changed. That's yeah. where it's scary, like that it could change like that and... Yeah. So it's kind of like likened to blockages, you know? Um, it's kind of like, you know, you felt the love you, that you married him or whatever. And then all these hurdles and blocks go up in front that, you know, he did this, he did that. He's not doing this. He didn't do that. He, you know, and all these things are blocking that free flowing love going from the husband to the wife. They just love the other direction. We're not handling that right now. It's it's you know that this this will kind of cure a lot of the love issues in a marriage, God willing. But the you know for a stable, healthy marriage to also have that, it just means too much stuff didn't get handled. Too much. We you know we're going to be covering a class actually on how to get to harmony after an argument. You know we're going to in 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 the next few months we're going to cover that. Actually, can you make a note of that? I'll remember. I I have a yeah. You know maybe maybe that will help with this it, to sort of clear the air and get things back into a harmonious thing to make sure that there's not a lot of you know blockages. You know like going up and going up and going up and then the, what is there? So um, it's handling conflicts and handling challenges that keeps that conduit open, and we'll we'll get we'll get there. But that's a very good point. And uh, again, the the first motivator of this is getting in touch with the sadness, is to understanding that sadness. Okay, um, let's see. All right. And the next thing is the tool part of the tool of the day for feeling loved is have a strong plan or course of action for how to ensure that the love gets through. So as we said, journaling, rewarding your body for letting love in. Like, so when you're, you're goof, so when, when um, he, he is loving you, when he says, I love you, and you're like, oh, yeah, right. Say, oh, I'm blocking the love cry, <laughs> get sad, and then say, I'm actually, I'm, I'm going to take a minute now and let that love in, okay? Um, <clears throat> involve, uh, let's see, oh, uh, strategies also involve explaining psych- the psychological barriers to your husband so he can support you. So again, there has to be a lot of trust with this, but, you know, saying, you know, when you, when, we're, we're, when you come home from work and you say, hey, I love you, so good to see you. I, my head is in 14 different places. I'm getting dinner ready. I'm getting the, doing the lunches. I'm, you know, my, you know, that, that doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't go in. I can't even hear it then. Can you do me a favor? Like sometimes when, 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 uh, when I wake up or when I go to bed or when, while we're eating dinner or when we're at a restaurant or whatever, can you tell me it then? You can do it both times. Do it when you come home and I just realize it's not really going in. So it, when you say it, don't think, oh, tick, I've said it to my wife today. 
it needs to be repeated later in the night when I can, when, you know, after the kids are bed or after, you know, I've calmed down, when my stress level is less, after I, come, after I exercise, whatever it is, these kinds of communications mean a lot because the husband doesn't get it. He's like, I said I love you, but timing is everything. Okay. Um, okay. Now, we're going to go through, boom, 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 the 10 that we covered, we covered these. Now, we're going to go through them and give solutions to every one of them. Okay. Any questions before we start embark on that? Um, no, not, not this time. Anyone in our teleconference, you're more than welcome. Yeah, star, star six, six. we'd love to hear, we'd love to hear your, your comments or just get on and say, yes, this is me. This is, okay, we'd fine. love to hear from you. Fine. Okay, great. So what is your personal block to feeling love? So as I'm listing these through, kind of identify in your own mind which one applies to you. And then you can jot down or re-listen to this part of the tape um, of the show uh, of how, what would work in your, in that particular situation. So we're never taught how to feel love. Our parents never showed love or it was conditional. Okay. The, there are a lot of different ways to handle this. You know, therapy is a one, but a journaling really can work very wonders. And I'll explain how it works. You want to think about what it felt like as a little girl, when you were a little girl to feel loved that your mother, your father, your grandmother, your grand, uh, grandfather, your aunt, uncle, or God himself, people who are not taught how to love can actually tap into their imagination and feel like what it, would it have been like to have been loved by this person? So the woman who was abused, if you can sort of get in touch a little bit with, you know, someone in your life that you were able to feel loved by, and journal about it. What did that girl, little girl feel? How, how, um, how did it make you feel? How did, uh, what was the ramifications of that love? What strength came from that love? What self-esteem came from that love? Write and write and write a few pages on just that um, aspect of feeling loved. And I think that really goes a long way to just, make, you know, paints a picture for you that you can build upon. Okay. And you also, with that... Um, even if you don't have your own examples, can you look at other people and how they're interacting and how they're loving each other and sort of... That's a good question. Can you, uh, can you get role models? So yeah. yeah, it's good. You can get role models, but it's a little tricky because people tend to idolize other people's marriages. I mean, I, I had somebody, uh, uh, this is a couple of weeks ago, saying, you know, uh, was it on the show? I, or maybe somebody yes, said it to me. Yes, and I put yes, it on yes, yes. Remember, Levy, and she, that she saw the the, the manicures that were yeah, 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 yes, yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah. was her and last said, week. Oh, I did my check out our yeah. show last week. It's amazing. <laughs> we actually had our first um, uh, get real with Leia show, which was amazing with Libby and right. Check so it out yeah, and she said that life. that you know she she was upset at her husband for not doing the dishes, and she was at somebody else's house, and she, and the, the the wife said, oh, I did my nails today. Do you mind doing the dishes? And he said, oh, sure. So now Libby's sitting like. Like O M G, like he, that that oh, wow, but sh she doesn't know whether like he later on said to his wife, "How come you asked me that in front of them?" Or whether the wife was doing it to set him up because he couldn't say no in front of other people and all that he had to look good. So then he had to do the dishes, which wasn't very nice of her. She was being what's that called? Manipul Passive aggressive, yeah, no, yeah. manipulative, whatever. <laughs> you know. So who knows what the show is? But the thing is, when you're using role models, like you're saying, it's always going to be a weird spin on it. So. Not sure we should go that way. If you have somebody you know very deeply, your sister and her husband, or your, um, you know, and you see your sister can get loved, but oftentimes when siblings sometimes have the same syndrome, so she can't feel loved right, and you right, can't feel loved. Right. You know? So well, maybe not in marriage, but maybe if uh, like that abuse situation, maybe she could see a mother to a child, how they're interacting. And how, and how that, you yeah. know, feel like I would, you know, like that as, a, as a, as as a role sort of model. Like, yeah, yeah, what it is. She might not even, you know. Yeah, maybe. very good. Okay. Number two, self-esteem uh, issues if you feel undeserving of that love. And I can't tell you how common this is. It's so common. And it, it's not easily recognizable in yourself either. So if you have a little slight uh, question if whether that, some people are like, yeah, that's me. Some people are like, yeah, I don't, I don't think so. I don't It's worth exploring. So if you have self-esteem issues, here's your homework. You need to get a journal and you need to write down stuff that's great about you. Really great about you. 
things that you accomplished that other people couldn't, things that you accomplished that everyone else can do. But if you make dinner every night, write that down. If you, um, uh, you know, I'm one of these people, like, I get so harried that if the phone's ringing and I'm, I'm, I, I let it go a lot, a lot or whatever. But there's some people who take great pride in answering every phone call. Like, I'm so, like, amazed, you know. If you're one of those people, write that down, all of the great things that you do. You want to do um, three thoughts, feelings, actions that you did every day. Write it in this journal. Bolster yourself. This helps to build self-esteem. There's a lot of books on self-esteem that you could read. Some are better than others. I don't actually know all of them, but I know that there's a lot of books on there. It's very crucial to be able to accomplish your mission in life to have self-esteem, to feel good about yourself, to feel like you're, you, you know, if you're always beating yourself up and we're very notorious for this, like, ah, oh, I shouldn't have said that. And, ah, oh, I should have, you know, parked the car over there. That's why I got a ticket. It's, you know, I'm and not, instead of saying, oh, I got, you know, it was Beshert that I meant, it was, I, it was meant to be for me to get a ticket today. And that's just the way it is. But we, or you can beat yourself up about it. So from the beat yourself up club. Okay. Uh, this is something, the way to work on that is to, to journal about it and to realize the cost of you beating yourself up. Okay. Number three, life circumstances, busyness, hardships, um, you know, a, a crazy frenzied life. So here's what you need to put on your to-do list. Take time today to feel loved. Just, it takes 30 seconds. It's not a big deal. I'm going to feel loved today. How am I going to feel loved today? Put it on your task li- list. Either it's taking a, mo- a, a moment to savor uh, something that you did, taking a moment to savor something your kid did, telling your husband or your your a friend, look what I did, okay? That is a opening up of yourself, a vulnerability of yourself to say, give me some love. <laughs> give me some love. I want some love right now. And that's perfectly acceptable, and it's uh, urgently important for you to feel love, for you to be able to accomplish what you're set on, why you were put on this planet Earth for a very specific reason, okay? I don't know what it is. Maybe you don't know what it is. I don't know why I am put here. I know I was put here for a reason. I've got a mission. I've got a lot to accomplish in my life, whether it's with my husband, with this show, with my kids, with not in that order, you know, uh, <laughs> You know, so we all have a mission. And if you do not feel loved, you cannot accomplish what you are put here for. Just be motivated for this. Okay, number four, not going to let you love me. I don't want to give you the satisfaction of letting you love me. So that takes a level of maturity and, and introspection. Bad habit to not let love you. Just as simple as, oh, I've got a, I always pick my, Okay, you gotta work on that. I always has his love aside. I don't let him annoyed at him. You be it's fine to be annoyed. In love with him and to expect yourself to not be annoyed at him is a tall order. You're gonna be annoyed. That should not and cannot be a good excuse for not letting that love get in. Is this clear? Are we here? Give me a thumbs up, something. I don't hear this. That can't stop you from feeling love. It should not and it cannot. Okay. Number five, unresolved anger. So we're going to cover anger in a future class. Um, in future classes, uh, we have a lot to say about anger. Our sources, we have a lot of sources on anger and we got a lot of solutions for that. So we will get there. But for now... There are books on anger. There are books on talk, dealing with toxic people. There are books on for uh, on uh, dealing with the outside circumstances and from the inside out how to deal with anger. Get yourself books on how to not bear <laughs> grudges. Thank you very much. Um, there are we we have several shows. Go back through our history and look for the shows on bearing grudges on anger. There's a lot of stuff you can look to uh, from the ladies' talk show that talk about bearing grudges and how to get over them. 